Okay. Now, I asked... Whoa, nerd glasses alert. Uh, I can't see anything. I asked for comments. Help, help! I'm still asking. This is part two. But I'm going to play in my son's... Uh, Wayne Static signature model. Because I'm getting ready to, you know, give it back to him. So I got to get the plan in. Um... So the first thing he says is, why don't you do, you know, he gives me a few ideas, this guy. Can't remember your name already, sorry dude. But it, at least he commented. And then one of my nephews commented. Or not nephews, but cousins. Um, <laughs> he just said hi. But the first guy said maybe I should, you know, do specials. Like, you know, why is the roads, you know... Why is the Randy? Why is Randy Rhodes, Les Paul, the most badass? It's not. The '74 Gibson Les Paul Custom that Randy Rhodes was given as a present, and he insisted on paying back all of the money that they spent, which is only a couple hundred bucks. This we're talking the '70s, where it was a kind of a up, so you can get you know just primo top-of-the-line Gibsons for, you know, several hundred dollars. In the 80s, you could buy them for 250 bucks, a Gibson Custom Black. I, I had a Black Beauty, I had a Sunburst, a Tobacco, Cherry, a white one, the black one, Black Beauty and just a black one. All Gibson Customs and Standards, I got them all for a couple hundred bucks as standbys. And then I just have them, and I thought maybe they'll go up, and they didn't. They just tanked and tanked and tanked until now. I would have had a, a load of money. But I didn't. I sold them all. <laughs> I mean, all of those Gib those Les Pauls, the uh, really nice Gibson ones. I only have a couple of Gibson Les Pauls, and they're all Ace Freely stuff. So... Um... The, the most amazing thing that this guy said, and this is what I'm saying. If you're listening to this, watching my videos on a phone, like everybody does, it's going to sound like a stinking AM radio. So that's your problem. Now he says that, uh, you know, I'm, I must be playing through crap or whatever. My sound sucks. Well, dude, I got to... A PV 6505 uh, plus on one side and a Marshall Code 50 on the other running in stereo always using right now I'm using a Tascam or TAC Tascam mic stereo mic with a stereo condenser mic so it's got the straight and then stereo left and right condenser and it goes about like this i put that in between the two amps and if you put real headphones on not earbuds because those suck too use real headphones look at these these cost about 70 bucks oh god these things use real headphones these are studio headphones these sound really good all my stuff that i play sounds really good if you plug these in and listen to them i this is not to be on played on a phone unless you're showing somebody look at this guy and his amazing leads that you can hear because it's leads and it's like a you know note <laughs> like well you, if you wouldn't get your stuff at the Dollar Tree apparently that's like 99 cent store out here so I don't this is thousands of dollars worth of equipment and effects the disc guitar is a it's in it's there is no price they don't make these they made about 50 less than 100 that's all we can get 
out of them and they're priceless so and they got Seymour's so I'm running this into five effects only one is on the mimic to make it wider everything is huge stereo so I the fir first off first thing I want somebody to do is tell me if this sounds like crap I mean tone wise sound wise not my playing the here what what do you hear does it sound full or you because if it does you're the only one hearing it I'm, my friend I'm, I'm telling you I mean thank you I, I don't want to discourage anybody from commenting but I gotta say it's got to be you because what I do is I whatever I play then I'll take it and I'll take this I'll play I'll listen to it on headphones to get the best sound quality and then I'll take this and plug it into my car stereo and drive test drive everything sounds better through car stereos that's where you get the so if I'm playing something to a drum track I know it's gonna be pretty cool because you know it sounds good through a car stereo and I got a really nice car stereo really nice uh, I don't know what it is <laughs> But I got a, hey, it's got a remote, so if it's got a remote, it's got to be good, right? I can't remember what kind of car stereo I got, because I got just so much stuff, dude. So that kind of, like, threw me. I'm like, really? The sound is your first uh, complaint or your first suggest? I, I got to say no, but I need more people. So tell me, is this guy right? Do I need to buy like a thousand dollars worth of? A Listen, I'm not gonna go in every video and uh, do you know put the drums in and put a you know two separate guitar tracks down like all these other guys do and then play to it and it sounds like a friggin' album because they do it Pro Tools and it takes them two or three days or it takes them a night if they got it all set up real quick. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is live playing i plug this in this is a high def this camera is it's several thousand dollar camera it's hd it's 16 by 9 it shoots everything high def it's stereo you're getting this in stereo so something's wrong with your stuff that's what i'm saying i'm hoping it's just this one guy somebody else comment this on this tonight does it sound good with headphones not with oh I listened to it on my on my laptop and it was all right it was stereo but you know it's it sounds small put the headphones on jeez really dude I'm just saying I'm pretty sure that's the problem the problem lies within the person listening and how they listen okay all right I'm yeah I'm getting mad already I haven't even got so that out of the way because I really don't think sound is the issue but he did give me some other ideas but only him and my cousin's son said anything so I'm starting to get pissed I need then I'll give it to him because he's giving no, me back no, no, another give anybody anything so God dang you stupid Airbnb dirt. wants you to think cities around the world are waiting with open arms oh, to invite them in. Hole, please. Okay, so I'm going to play this. Uh, what do we got? Uh, drum loop, hard rock, what's the beats per minute, 60 too slow, 100, eh, eh. hard rock beat. I'm gonna put you on with this. You tell me if it sounds bad. Ready? Set. A one, two, three, on a one, two.
on it, run up and down a little bit. tell me if that sounds bad this is continuation from last night but adding a different guitar this is Wayne static signature model see his little face and a little something else very low number because <laughs> they didn't do it and I think, what is the number on this sucker they're low I'm telling you but listen, I need people to tell me what to do. Okay, so it is was done in oh let's see and this is the way they do it. It's month. Wow, this is a low number. This is number fifty-six. Fifty-six. So they did a hundred. This is fifty-six. It's got everything original on it. It's beautiful condition. The only thing is, is the guy tried to swipe out this and he put in a Kramer P90. What an idiot. So I told my son, you know, give him shit marks on the eBay thing. And uh, maybe he'll, he'll cave and give you some money to get a real thing. And uh, he just disappeared off eBay really over this because he lost a lot of money he sold this to my son for 300 bucks the things were thousands of dollars thousands what a goof so anyway please tell me what you think about the audio the sound quality because I think this guy even though he was the only one to really comment back, and I appreciate it. So thank you, dude. But I'm telling you, if you take, go home and you listen to these uh, with real headphones, good headphones, not earbuds, real good studio monitor headphones, just headphone headphones like those, 70, 80 bucks. It will. It sounds big. It, dude. What is this? I think I got a. This is a sure uh I'm on a stand, but I got the poof I, I take the cover off because I can't stick it between the amps as well. But there it is. So it's you got the boom or not the boom but the uh shotgun and then the two sides 
is a condenser stereo microphone, which you need for really loud, just when you're doing stuff like this. Now, if it was a studio, we'd mic each amp separately with a, what, a Shure SM57-8? Can't remember. Which I have, but I'm not going to go through all the trouble of micing each amp up, doing two tracks along with the bass and drum track for this. This is so I can just turn on the camera, record, plug in, record, bam, everything's set up, and then when I'm done, off, plurt, turn on, you know, put back guitar, upload onto my computer, edit a little bit if I'm picking my butt or whatever, take that out of the video, and boom, you got it. Maybe I'll throw some lightning or fire in there. That's my new thing I like to do. Uh, other than that, I don't see is that I don't see that's the problem is the audio. It's the content. And I will talk about anything. I will talk about the old days in Hollywood. Everybody knows the Sea Hag story. That's a classic. I'm tired of telling it. There's other stories where me and my band, uh, Stiletto, it was just kind of in between Stiletto and Trick or Treat, Rudy and Tony and a couple of my friends went over to a party and totally trashed the house. We put as many light bulbs as we could fit and eggs and fish into a microwave and turned it on for an hour and just watched everything explode and, psh, psh, and the thing finally went out because someone threw some uh, foil in there. So that, did, that killed that. Then my drummer was peeing into the giant aquarium and this party, this girl had invited me over. It was her birthday and she wanted a present. So I can't get hold of her. I'm like, dude, I gotta go. I wanna go to this other party. So find the girl. So they're knocking on doors and all the doors are locked because she didn't want anybody to get in. I go, start punching holes in the doors, please. So my two roadie dudes that are football guys Boom, boom, they're punching holes in all the doors. They finally find her in a room with another girl. I'm like, oh, that's the one. So I said, do not go out of this room until morning because I have a surprise for you. So I left. We all left. And then, of course, the surprise was her house was totaled. Someone, there was a big, there was, you know, it was a typical 80s house. And we pretty much destroyed everything. We, as in my friends, not me. I didn't do anything except for what I was called there to do. So, stupid stuff. Or me rolling 12 times, going 100 miles an hour on the 101 th freeway in, at 3 in the morning. And me and the drummer in a van were rolling. Bleh! He's, I can see him going out. I pull him in. Total the van. There's a car full of girls following us down from Santa Barbara. They're crying. I can hear them. And... This is, what, 87, 88, 87. So this is a different time. There's nobody on the freeway at the 101 and the 405. So the van's just sitting there. So they're crying. We can see, And it's van is totaled. We rolled 12 times, slammed into the center divider, and then fell flat on face up. And... I'm like, we're not dead, you stupid idiots, get us out of here. So I start kicking the wind, the glass out from the window, and they pull us out by our legs. And uh, turns out I broke my toe, but I thought I busted everything. So they take us to, they're going to take us to a hospital. But the stupid drummer, Rudy, starts hitting on the driver. The driver doesn't want any of it. So she pulls over to the side of the freeway, and throws us out. I'm like, why are you throwing me out? Is your friend? I go, yeah, but I need medical attention. Fine, you just got to take me two or three blocks where you can walk. I go, no, I can't. I busted my foot. You idiot. Then she took off. But we took our booze. So I, my drummer, he's like, what, 5'2", five 5'5". Five five. Give him a little... Little dude, you know, Rudy, uh, whatever his last name is, Cuban with a giant hairball. That's all he was, a giant, great drummer. So I get on his back, and he walks in heels. <laughs> He's got heels on. These two drag queens, we walk from the freeway all the way to my friend's house. We crash there the next day. I'm still, uh, they get up, report the van missing, 
and the cops go, yeah, we got really bad news for you. It's completely totaled. We found it on the 101. Do you want to come get anything? Oh, yes, I'd like to, sir. And then he comes and gets it, signs the papers that it was stolen, and he gets insurance money for him. But then I stay almost two days at at the county USC because I got no money. I'm a rocket dude. So they take me there, and I'm like, haven't eaten in weeks, and I'm going into shock for some reason. I end up falling, passing out in the waiting room because I've been standing there for like an hour. Oh, get up off the floor, sir, they're saying, I guess. I don't remember. And my friend said, oh, he's in a really bad car accident, and he needs help. And then they put me on a stretcher, and a guy messed her. He wasn't supposed to move me because they thought I might have broke my, my uh, neck. I didn't. I broke my toe. I broke one toe. I said, just get me out of here. But I was in there for like hours. I finally get out, get my bottle of pills, blah, beer, go to Tommy's, burr, take down a burger, go home and sleep and sleep and sleep. And then that leads into I wake up and then there's another party I go to. I don't know what happened. I'm Because I'm taking the pain pills, I'm drinking... I'm walking around this school. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. It just goes on. This just went on and on and on and on over a decade of ridiculousness. Maybe that's what I should call the book. Decade of Ridiculousness. Because it was. Because right now my title for my book or film is One Flew Over the Sunset Strip. Uh, the Tales of Michael Skews. I was going to call it The Life and Crimes, but Alice has already done that. I can do it again. But One Flew Over the Sunset Strip. The Tales of Michael D. Rock legend. And then it says, if you don't believe him, ask his mother. Or something like that. I don't know. There's so much crap, man. Maybe that sounded better. So I want, I want feedback on the audio part of my thing and anything else come on let's have it come on tell me stuff I need to know all right enough of this because it's coming to the end of the year and if things don't change on YouTube bye I could do anything I could get people up here to interview and I'm going to if it's worth my time I could get guys up from any band that played in the 80s. Any band that are alive. Maybe even some that aren't alive. <laughs> like the time I punched Axel in the face because he thought I was picking his girlfriend picking up on his girlfriend. And at the Troubadour, I, I decked Axel Rose. And then also there's another time where the singer from Warrant was always after my first ex wife. The best one. And she was cute, and everybody, Ricky Rocket was, you know, trying to get her, and I was furious. I was going to beat the crap out of all of them, because when I was young, mm, as I grew, by the time I was 25, I could care less. But at that time, you know, you don't mess with my, even if we're, you know, separated. So I had to threaten Ricky. I punched Janie Lane right in the face, because he actually drove by, I love you, my that's it you're dead so me and my friend bass player at a party we're gonna leave this party the nelson brothers and go to another one and as we're walking out here comes Janie, out of his new corvette i'm like that's the guy that's yelled crap at my mom. so i'm like hey man he's like aren't you wham now i feel bad because he's but hey punched axel Janie, who else? I got punched in the face by three guys from this loser band. I won't even say the name. And uh, three guys at once. By my guys that are supposed to protect me are like half a block away. Then they come running back. But, you know, there's already someone, you know, like some girl's kicking me, at, you know, as I'm passed out on the strip. She's kicking me in the stomach because I said something to her earlier. At least that's what my ex-wife was saying. Why are you kicking him? And then she punched her and pushed her away, and she took care of me, my ex-wife. I don't know why she was there. She just happened to be there, luckily. 
And then I ended up spending all night in that hospital that night. Because I got my nose broken and some other crap. It was bad. That was towards the end. And then I got, you know, Fatal Attraction kind of took off. And then I rode that wave until it was over. And then, pfft, see ya. Bye. It was in my first Randy Rose tribute. It was in 92. And I can tell you, it's the first official tribute ever because I gave the flyer to Mrs. Rhodes. She was very happy and proud of it. I gave her a copy of the video. She said the guitarist was very good, blah, 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 blah. I love Mrs. Rhodes. She was great. Uh, but yeah, that's what I did. In 92, I knew the scene was done. So I did tribute bands. Me and Cold Gin. So it was Blizzard and Cold Gin and Led Zepp again. We'd play all these clubs and sell them out. I'm thinking, should have done this 10 years ago. And then uh, after that, I reformed a band. Or I formed a band with this guy, Lion. Come on, come on. we got to finish my thing. He's a good singer. And uh, we put a band together called Terrace 49. We played like two clubs, sucked, nobody was there. The last show, I said, I'm only doing one more show, dude. It's at the friggin' FM station. It was packed. Everybody was there. And I'm thinking, why did I just tell him this is the last show? But I, I gotta keep my word. Plus, 30 years old, I was out. So, that was it, too. I was turning 30, so I was just quitting the business, going back to school, and getting into the uh, film industry, and... Beep, beep. But there's a lot of stories, thousands and thousands and thousands, where I wake up in the mountains, in the desert, in with snakes, with girls and snakes, thank goodness, snake skin all over my hair, craziness, craziness. Could go on and on and on and on, having the girl slit her, her arm so I could drink her blood, and I'm like, well, okay, I'm thinking... This is the height of the AIDS epidemic, but I'm sucking down girls' blood. Or, the Seventh Veil story. Whoa. That's a whole different thing. So, okay, I could just go on and do that. Since the audio on my guitar is so bad. I don't think so, though. You tell me. You tell me. Late.